Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Everyone, welcome to the show. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. So 55-year-old Washington resident John Cameron posted on Twitter on January 5th, writing, quote, Patriot Party in D.C., Trump march with all of us MAGA supporters, protest against the steal and support election integrity, hashtag stop the steal. The following morning, Cameron posted pictures of himself in D.C. This was on Facebook. Later that day, he shared videos of his crimes in one video taken within the restricted area of the Capitol. Cameron was heard yelling, quote, I'm going. Come on. I know I'm old, but it's time. In another post, Cameron shared a video of the mob breaching the inauguration stage, and he captioned it, quote, civil disobedience. In a later video, Cameron said, quote, to give you an indication of how important millions of people in the country think election integrity is, civil disobedience has kicked in and they are doing what they think is right to get attention on the subject. So you can judge, we can all judge whether this is illegal or not, but if this is what it takes to be heard because our votes aren't, then this is what happens. Cameron was also seen on video entering the Capitol. He was inside the Capitol. He recorded others inside of a Capitol conference room. And con he continued to post throughout the day. He downplayed the violence and the chaos. And then he later tried blaming Antifa, of course. On his way home, Cameron shared another lengthy video on Facebook. And he said in part, quote, was it pretty? No. Did it make a statement? Yes. Then he went on to say that he didn't actually know who broke the Capitol doors, but it was, quote, a fun, exciting, interesting and historic event. Then he insinuated that all of the illegal activity was actually perpetrated by Antifa and BLM. And then following January 6th, Cameron posted again on Facebook. He shared a selfie and he wrote, quote, the least safe I felt was when walking back to catch a train. I was told to F you by a little Antifa blm -er on a Vespa. How terrifying that must have been for him. Uh, later that night, Cameron seemed to realize, though, that he might be in trouble because he and his wife had this lengthy back and forth about whether or not he should remove the photos and videos that he took inside the building. So this was all in writing. He also told friends that they should keep his videos, quote, on the DL. And when some of his friends asked for his opinion about what took place, he continued to blame Antifa. But then in a private message to his wife, he admitted, quote, Antifa did not storm the Capitol. Then in response to a friend who talked about Ashley Babbitt shooting, Cameron wrote, quote, we should burn and riot and loot over it. Um, so Cameron was arrested on January 5th of this year, and he was charged with entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, and one count of parading in a capital. In May, Cameron pleaded guilty to the parading charge. He was facing up to six months in jail, five years of probation, and 5,000 in fines, although the prosecutor was only asking for 30 days in jail three years of probation, 60 hours of community service, and a $500 restitution fee. At the sentencing hearing, Cameron tried to schmooze the judge, which is Ronald Reagan appointee Thomas Hogan. Now, if he watched the show, he would know Hogan does not suffer fools, and he did not like what went on there. So this was wrong. Um, but Cameron said to him, quote, can you guess who my favorite president is, your honor? 
So Hogan didn't reply. And so Cameron just answered and said, you might know a little about him. It's Ronald Reagan. (laughs) Then Cameron went on to cite the Pledge of Allegiance like a complete jackass. Honestly, in reading this, it reminded me of that scene from Die Hard where that idiot sales guy steps up and she tries to schmooze the terrorists and then they blow him away. They just murder him. (laughs) So in a way, Judge Hogan kind of verbally murdered Cameron because he started questioning him about how he could possibly not know, you know, fail to realize what was going on all around him. And he asked Cameron if he really thought it was, quote, fun. And then the judge warned him, quote, so you thought you had a right to go into the building without security, without permission? You're getting close to withdrawing your guilty plea. I'll tell you that right now, which means that the whole thing would have been over. He would have just had to go to trial. So Cameron responded saying, quote, no, I picketed within the Capitol and that was illegal. I would never do it again. And then, of course, he went on to whine about how it had affected him, how he was deplatformed on Facebook and how the financial costs of his own damn actions were very hard on him. And the the judge wasn't moved. Um, he continued to press Cameron about his social media posts. This is after January 6th. He referred to January 6th defendants as, quote, political prisoners. And then in one post, he mentioned the, quote, weaponized, politicized, double standard of justice. And then Judge Hogan really went off on all of the insurrectionists. He said, quote, I keep hearing from January 6th defendants, we're being prosecuted like it's a surprise or we're being persecuted like it's unfair. I do not understand that psychology. What irritates me most is that all of you are claiming you're patriots. You're not patriots when you attack the capital of the United States. What they did was essentially an attempted insurrection against the country and the rule of law. Then he went on to compare Trump's insurrectionists to a lynching mob. And Hogan said, quote, you're being willfully blind to what was going on, frankly. And, quote, I don't know how you can tell yourself you didn't see violence, never heard any violence, that you never saw any evidence of people entering through windows. In your own prior statements, you talked about broken doors. You seem to forget that now. I think you attempted to hide this from yourself as much as you can. And Judge Hogan told Cameron that he was lucky that the prosecutor didn't hit him with a felony charge, given the statements that he had made after the fact on social media. And he said, quote, if I had a different plea in front of me and more options available, I would probably put you in jail for a long time. So when Hogan was done just raking him over the coals, he sentenced him to 30 days in jail 36 months of probation, a $1,000 fine, and $500 in restitution. And he's allowing Cameron to serve his jail time in three-day increments for some reason. I'm thinking it's for financial reasons. Uh, The judge also noted, quote, you do owe very substantial back taxes, a small fortune. But Hogan acknowledged, you know, that while it concerned him, it was something for the IRS to handle. So was this enough? No. And clearly, the prosecutor is to blame. Had he or she required Cameron to plead to a greater crime, the judge would have been more inclined to give a much harsher sentence. He made that clear. So these prosecutors are failing us. Most of the time, it's both the prosecutor and the judge. In this case, it was obviously the prosecutor. So when and if I hear more about this guy, I'll let you know because this is not a deterrence. Thank you so much for watching and listening, guys. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon. 